Hey, I had some free time last Sunday, so um, I thought I'll shoot some photographs using freelancing. Freelancing is a technique that I think that I mentioned to you and even showed you some pictures earlier, but I don't think I ever went deeper and really explained what it means. Now, to me, freelancing produces sort of artistic results. It's sort of part of my ongoing exploration to the deep end of photography where I don't want to document the reality but more like getting these moody sort of maybe a bit emotional images. I know a lot of you guys are after good quality images. You, you, you want to have a camera that produces picture-perfect results, no light leaks, um, you want to find a, a film that small crane and use the developer that produces excellent results. Today, none of that. So maybe you can then think about this as a service to you, like I'm going to do all the dirty bits, so you don't need to do those. At least to me, uh, freelancing produces sort of moody and low quality results if that's the right term. Hey, so before I show you the pictures, let me explain what freelancing is and what do you need to take into account if you want to try it yourself. It's actually pretty simple to do, but you need to take a few things into account. So the concept of freelancing starts uh, with the camera from where you can remove the lens. That's the first thing. Because you take the picture so that you hold the lens in your hand and you don't connect it with the camera. And then you hold it carefully in front of the camera and when it looks right, you press the shutter and take the pitch. Now, it needs to be a camera that focuses through the lens. Because that's how you focus it, like there's no other way. You can't use a rangefinder camera like a Leica, even though you can remove the lens, but there's no way of focusing it then. Uh, also, you need to have the shutter in the body of the camera, so the shutter can't be in the lens. So, for example, uh, a Hasselblad 500 series wouldn't do because they have shutters in the lens. So an SLR camera with an inbuilt shutter, that's the starting point. Then the next thing to take into account is that in most of the cases you can't use the, the regular lens, like the lens that was built for that camera, to take your freelancing pictures. That now requires a little bit more explanation, so bear with me, because I think this is important to understand. Let me illustrate with this Craflex now something. By the way, you can't use this one either for freelancing, because you, it's a rangefinder camera and you don't focus through the lens. <laughs> hey, hold on a second. Uh, when I was editing this video, I noticed that right now some wise guy is gonna say that hey, but you can focus through the lens with your Craflex if you use the crown glass. And yes, that is true. But if you focus through the ground glass, you can't take the picture before you put the film in and engage the shutter. And when you do that, you lose the focus. Like there's no way of you keeping this stationary for you to put in the film and, and engaging the shutter. So if you are not convinced, think about it a bit. Like there's no way of freelancing with uh, speed graphics. <laughs> Just wanted to say, I don't want to comment on that later. <laughs> so now, when you focus to your subject, you need to adjust the distance from your lens to your film. That's how you focus in every camera. And the further away the lens is from the film, film is here, lens is here, the further this distance is, the closer 
the focus becomes. So if you make close-up images, you really want to expand this. And then the closer, the smaller this gap is, the further is the focus point. So that in infinity there's a certain distance between the lens and the film and that's how you can focus to infinity. Now here I move the lens for them back just using this this kind of a bellow mechanism and, and really moving the entire lens. For example with my Pentax, uh, Pentax Spotmatic I, it's the same thing but, but it's a bit more difficult to see but this lens moves forth and back when I rotate this. So it's the same functionality. I just move this lens forth and back. Now to focus to infinity the lens is as collapsed as possible. It is as close to the film as possible. That's how cameras are built. And then when you remove the lens for the freelancing you create a gap between the lens and the camera. So now the lens is further from the film plane than it was designed. And therefore, using the standard lens, you can't focus to infinity. Sorry for the long explanation, but some people have tried freelancing with the lens of that particular camera. And the only thing you can do is to focus close really close. So you can you can do some freelancing with this combination but then you can't focus to the objects <laughs> further down the road. You get me? You understand what I'm saying? This is very important to understand. So how do you then then do this? So typically if you use a 35 millimeter regular film camera you need to go one step further and take an other lens from a, typically from the medium format camera. Now this is not a bulletproof thingy but most often it works. So you go one step higher and I chose to use a lens from my Kiev 60. It's a regular Kiev 60 lens. And now I free lens with my Pentax using this lens. And now I can focus to infinity. It's actually here. Now it focuses to infinity. Um, if I shoot with my Kiev, I need to go one step further with free lensing. And then I use my... Mm, sorry guys, running out of hands here. I use my large format camera lens. And now I can focus to infinity. It's actually here. That's the distance. Once again with my Kiev, I couldn't use the original Kiev lens. Because it would be too far away from the lens when I'm holding it in my hand to focus to infinity. That's interesting, but you know, good to remember. Um, so some other things that you need to remember, as the lens is not attached to the camera and you take the picture like this. This is actually how I take it with my Spotmatic. So here's the, the really shutter, shutter release button and then you just focus it like that. Uh, there's obviously light leaks. You easily get light into the film because you it's not attached. So to mitigate that you can try different things. My trick is to have a black mitten like this just a, and then hold the film uh, the lens in my hands and now I can limit the light leak significantly by with this dark mitten. And then the light leaks are part of the game, but then you can control the light leaks by 
turning and twisting the lens a little bit. By the way, this turning and twisting is part of the game. You want to do that because that gives you very interesting uh, focus possibilities. So now when you take pictures with freelancing, it's extremely delicate how you move the lens. You can get the light leaks wherever you want by moving your mitten or your hand. And then you can put the focus wherever you want by tilting the lens. And that's the whole beauty of this freelancing. You can sort of paint with, with, um, with light, uh, unlike with the stationary lens. But the problem is that it, it, it is extremely fragile and, and, and you get a lot of Why do you get a lot? <laughs> you get a lot. Of, I was about to say a lot of mistakes, but I don't consider them mistakes. You get a lot of challenges. Um, now, last Sunday was an overcast day and, and I was kind of a, a bit miserable. So I thought I'd go to a miserable place and, and take some miserable pictures. <laughs> so I went to this. I've been there before and I showed you some 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 of that scenery also before. By the way, I don't typically shoot with a 35 millimeter, but I have this, you know, how I do it. I have empty film rolls, then I buy film in bulk. This time I bought Fomapan 200, it's about 30 meters of film here. And then I use this kind of um, tool that allows me to fill in as much film into one roll as I want. So I typically make like 15 frames for one single roll. 36 is far too many images for my like just a, a bit of a sidetrack. So if you are really into this size of the film, consider buying bulk. It's easier and, and cheaper and, and more convenient. From up on 200 Spotmatic Volna 3 lens from my Kiev, and this is what happened. Hey, by the way, I develop all the pictures in this video using stand development, uh, one 100 mix of Rodinal. Uh, stand development allows me to control the exposure in the development time. Like it tolerates plus minus three, even four stops of mis-exposure and, and with freelancing it is sometimes difficult to control the exposure correctly because I mean you got light leaks and and how much is this gonna add now f-stops when I move it for them back so you never know so stand development Rodinal uh, every time you can't control the exposure when you take the picture and you need to control it afterwards stand development is your friend so then, okay, after the Pentax and Volna, I wanted to go and shoot some medium format freelancing pictures with my Kiev. And now I can't use the Volna lens anymore because this is the, the standard lens for Kiev. I need to go one step higher, one step bigger. So I took my um, Reflex lens. And by the way, now one word of warning. Uh, this is a bit dangerous thing to do, this whole freelancing. You can easily scratch your lens when you move it in front of your camera. You might even drop it. So I suggest that you never use your best and most valuable lenses doing these things. And 
you know, these Volna lenses are not that expensive and this is my worst Graflex lens. I got a couple of these, so this is the worst one. So with Kiev it works like this. So first of all, uh, the release shutter is here. You gotta be a bit creative when you use it, like which hand do you use for which and how do you use it. So here I press the camera you know, against my beautiful tummy and then I have my thumb here and then just free lensing with the other hand and like this. Yeah, and then one more thing. Um, I um, actually had my ultimate freelancing camera with me, which is my Graflex RP Series B 4x5 SLR camera. As I told you earlier, the camera needs to be an SLR camera with a mirror and then focusing from there. And there are not that many 4x5 cameras that have uh, that are SLR cameras, but I have one which is of course my trusted Graflex RP series B. Now this is a camera. Let me take that mitten off. This is an interesting camera because what it does is that it focuses beyond infinity and therefore I can use the standard lens for freelancing. I don't need to find a bigger large format camera lens but I can use this one. What does it mean to focus beyond infinity? So as I told you, the closer the lens is to the film the further is the object. And if I now focus to infinity here, let me focus to infinity so you can see where the infinity spot is. Here. Now I'm focusing to infinity. That goes a bit already inside of the camera. But look at this. I can get it even closer. So this was infinity but it goes a little bit deeper in, so this is beyond infinity. Now this allows me to do an interesting thing. I can remove this lens, move the focus beyond infinity, and now I can have this lens in front of my camera and still focus to infinity because there's a little bit wiggle room for me now to do it and I, I can use this standard lens. Now with this camera then how I take it is like this that I have the lens in my right hand then I focus through the camera I don't know if you can see and then when, I, when it's all right I press the shutter release with my thumb. This is a heavy monster and, and, and it's, it's a little bit of an acrobatic, acrobatic you know, act, but, but this allows me to control also light leaks more accurately than any of these. For the reason that this lens goes inside of the body of the camera and so there's less lights getting in. And you know, pictures like this.
So hey, what interests me in this is that um, this really is more painting than photography. And, and it is that fraction of the second when everything is right through the viewfinder that you take the pitch. Uh, moving the lens ever so slightly changes drastically the view and you can control the light leak with the minimum, minimal like fraction of the millimeter movement and you can see the light leak also here on the viewfinder. So you can do, if you are skillful, more skillful than I am, you can probably do a lot of really interesting painting things with this. Uh, when I look at these pictures, you know, they start to remind me of some of the really early pictures, pictures from the, you know, like 200 years ago. Here's a picture that is considered to be the first photograph ever taken. And it looks exactly like my pictures. So I'm like 200 years too late with my experiments, but you know, I don't care. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. Next time something else.